Hi, my name is Christy Muscatti. In this video, I'm going to be doing a demonstration of how to check in a patient. Please keep in mind that this demonstration is conducted in a test environment, therefore not everything will mirror exactly as it is in production. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is verify my patient's name, date of birth, and their appointment visit type. So I'm going to be using test Jamie down here at the bottom. I can go ahead and double click on the appointment to launch the appointment window. The very first thing I want to do is change my visit status from pending to processing. Now I do need to go ahead and click the OK button at the bottom right hand corner so that it updates my status. I can now go ahead and double click on my appointment and move forward. So now that my status has been changed to processing, I'm going to go ahead and give my patient their any paperwork that might need to be filled out. If they didn't fill it out online before, I'm going to collect their insurance card, their ID, anything that I might need to input them in the system. The first thing I'm going to do is click on my info button up here at the top center of the screen, and this is going to take me to that demographic window. I'm going to confirm that I have the appropriate name in for my patient. If they had a previous name, such as their maiden name, I would add that here, as well as a preferred name. So in this instance, my patient's preferred name is Jamie Lynn. Now I can see this in multiple places throughout the system. For example, in this window, at the very top in this blue bar, I can see Jamie Lynn listed here in quotations. I can also see this in the hub, on the progress note, multiple places throughout the system. I have my patient's address listed here. I'm going to click on my validate button and it's going to validate it through UPS ensuring that I have the appropriate address listed. I want to double check that I have an email on file for my patient. If I don't have one, I'm going to check the box for not provided and then choose a reason why. In the top right hand corner, I'm going to click on my SOGI button to ensure that I have my patient's birth sex, sexual orientation and gender identity listed. I also want to ensure that I have the responsible party listed as self. Now in this instance, I do already have it listed correctly, but I can always click on my select button and this is where I would make that selection. If my patient provided me with an emergency contact, I'm going to have that person listed here. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to have my insurance is added in. Now in this case, I do already have the appropriate insurance added in here. If I didn't, I can always click on this add button. And then my magnifying glass in the top left hand corner where I could search for the appropriate insurance. So I'll just click on one so that you can see what that window looks like. From here, I would choose the appropriate sequence, enter in the subscriber number, a copay if there's one listed, and the group number. I also have the option if I click the drop down arrow next to add where I can do an insurance scan from here as well. You also have another scan button, which I do not have here in my test database, where you can scan in the photo ID and maybe some patient paperwork. Be sure that if you are using this functionality that you rename and review that document if time permits. If not, it will land in your D jelly bean until it's been reviewed. I also want to double check that I have a pharmacy on file for my patient. In this instance, I can see that I actually have two pharmacies on file. I can tell which one is primary because it has a green check mark underneath that P column. If I wanted to switch it to the other pharmacy, I could just simply switch that check mark. And then to add a pharmacy, I could always click my add button over here on the right hand side, choose the appropriate pharmacy, and then click OK. In the top right hand corner, this is where I'm going to find my rendering provider. This should always be a provider that is in the office. Now it doesn't need to be changed unless that provider has left the practice. I have my patient's language listed here, their race and ethnicity. I want to ensure that my signature date is listed as today's date. If it isn't, I can hit my calendar icon and switch it to the appropriate date. And then down at the very bottom, I want to enter in my default facility. Now in previous versions of ECW, this was listed on the additional information window. So please note that it has now moved to this regular demographic screen. I can click on my additional information window at the bottom left hand corner. I can choose the option for leave a message if my patients provided that with me. And then I can hit that drop down to choose brief or extended. 
Now, one thing you will not see in my test database is over here on the right hand side where I have structured data. This is where you could go in and add how the patient has heard about the practice. I can click my OK button down here at the bottom. I'll click my save button here so that any information I might have changed will update. And now I'm ready to switch my visit status from processing to arrived. I'll click my OK button down here at the bottom right hand corner and this is going to update that status for me. This concludes our video. Thank you for joining.